Hi, this is Dot Too Fast here, and what you're looking at is my very, very old Linksys router. This is the WRT54GL. I think I've had it for over 10 years, and honestly, it's really served me well because I have been able to use this to do all my uploads and, you know, internet surfing uh, for the past decade. But unfortunately, in the past week, it's really slowed down. Uh, I think it's about to die. Download speed right now is measuring at about 2 megabit per second and the upload is at about 20 kilobit per second and with that kind of speed I can't do any real work at home. Also in my house right now I have added so many devices that needs to connect to the router and this old router just really can't keep up anymore. So in this video I'm going to show you the new router that I bought today. I'm going to replace it with a new Netgear router. Right now it's about 9.30 p.m. at night and I need to get this new setup uh, configured and up and running uh, as quickly as I can so that I can do some work tomorrow. So let me show you what I picked up today. These are the components I'll be installing to upgrade my network. On the left side, the two boxes you see, this is the Netgear ProSafe 8 port giggy switch and the model number on that is the GS108. I picked these up at Fry's today. Regular is $40. It was on sale for 30 and also has a $10 rebate, so it comes out to $20 a piece. Really good deal. This is their uh, business grade switch. Comes with a lifetime warranty. Over to the right, that big box you see is the Netgear Nighthawk X6 AC3000 router. And this one I picked up at Costco for $250. It's an expensive router, but I need something that's reliable and also has very good throughput. That small black box you see at the bottom there, that's just a Western Digital 2 terabyte hard drive with a USB 3.0 connector and I'll be plugging that into the router so I have a network attached hard drive where I can access files on any of my computer in the home. Now in this video I'm not going to go into full detail of the rewiring of my entire network. That's going to be a bit of a work in progress over the next month. Uh, what I will do in this video is to unbox the Netgear Nighthawk router and show you this router because it's a pretty cool looking router uh, almost look like a spaceship but anyways uh, let me get started so I can show you what this router look like Here are all the pieces that come with this router. Now, if you look at the picture, you see the antenna on the side. You'll notice that on the router, there are no external antennas. The reason for that is because the antenna is actually integrated into the chassis, so it doesn't have any external antenna with the mini coaxial connector. Here is the power supply. You get the ethernet cable, the user guide. So let's have a closer look at the router. This is a very big unit. Let's have a quick look on this unit. So on the front and the middle here, you see the LED status. Over here on the back, we have the LED on off switch, four giggy ethernet port, one internet port, USB 3.0, reset button, DC voltage input, and the power on off switch. Here is the bottom. And there are a couple of holes here, so you can wall mount this if you want to. Let me run through some of the main specs on this router. The weight of this router is 2.43 pounds. It's a hefty unit. It does simultaneous tri-band Wi-Fi. 2.4 gig and 5 gig. It handles 802.11 B, G, and N at 2.4 gig and also 802.11 A, N, and A, C at 5 gig. It has a Smart Connect feature which will select the fastest Wi-Fi for each and every device. And all the processing is handled by a dual core 1 gig processor. As for memory, it has 128 meg flash 
and 256 meg of RAM. Now there's only one USB 3.0 port and the USB port can be connected to a printer or a hard drive so that you can do some network sharing and it also supports IPv6 if you want to use that addressing scheme. So right now I'm going to go and set this up. I'll report back in a couple minutes and let you know if the configuration and the setup is very simple and if everything works. Here's a look at all the old stuff I took out. Well, I just spent about an hour, got everything back up and running. Here you see the Netgear AC3000 router. It's a rather big router, so I had to move things around so that will fit in this spot. Now the setup doesn't take that long. It probably takes you about maybe 10 minutes to set up the login, set up your SSID, and the password to log into your Wi-Fi. But I had to make sure all the devices in the house are connected and working. Now the stuff that's connected via the Ethernet cable, they're pretty straightforward. It gets the IP address via DHCP. But the devices that I need to make sure is working are the wireless ones. In this house I have four wireless IP cameras, two wireless thermostats, two wireless laser printers, and several tablets and mobile phones. So those were the devices that I had to make sure were connected to this new router. During that process, I also found one of my voice over IP box, the power supply was dying and it kept on rebooting that box. So that added another 15-20 minutes while I had to find a replacement power supply. Now as a comparison, here is the old Linksys router. One thing I didn't show you is that I did replace a couple of older switches with the two new Netgear 8-port giggy switch I showed you earlier. And this is one of the older ones I had. There's a 10100 Trend Net switch. So this is not in use anymore. Here's one of the new Netgear switch I installed. Here I'm on speedtest.net website. I'm going to do a quick uh, speed test. Let's start that right now. And the final result shows that the download speed is 33.8 megabit per second and the upload speed is 35.6 megabit per second. Very, very good. Much, much better than the Linksys router that I replaced. Now there is one thing I want to mention before I end the video and that is during the configuration of the router the user interface prompted me for a firmware upgrade. I clicked the button to agree to upgrade the firmware and just sat there. Um, there was no status bar. The screen was still there, but it just kind of flashed continuously. Uh, after about 10 minutes, it didn't do anything. So that's one thing I'm going to have to look into a little further. I might have to call up Netgear and find out why um, the unit is not able to flash the new firmware. But besides that, so far everything's working. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And don't forget to click on the like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.